Do you want to know how you could take your game ready made models straight from Blender into Unity, materials, textures, and all? Well, then you're in the right place. Let's get straight into it. Before I begin, I'd like to state that this is not a free add on. This add on costs $30. I did pay for it myself, and it was worth every dime. Blender to Unity does exactly what it's supposed to do, as I showed you in the beginning take your models straight from Blender into Unity with materials, with textures. It can do LODs and colliders. And honestly, it's amazing. I love it. It's, it. It is a game changer and saves you so much time. Let's jump straight into the installation process. You'll want to go to your account in the top right corner, go down to orders. Once you're on your orders page, you're gonna find the order that has the add-on in it, and you're gonna go to the go to downloads button. If you have multiple add-ons per an order, you'll see them all listed right here. Find the Blender to Unity add-on and download the latest versions. Both the Blender to Unity version something point something point something zip and the BUI importer v something CS script. Now let's hop straight back into Blender. You could take the add on straight from your downloads folder and drag it into Blender right here and it will automatically install, but we'll do it the traditional way. Go to edit, preferences, in the pop up window, go to add ons. And then hit this drop down in the top right corner and hit install from disk. Find wherever you located your add on. Click on it and hit install from disk. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to do that. Once it's installed, just make sure the checkbox is checked. Now hop over to your Unity project. Once you're in your Unity project, make sure you drag in your downloaded CS script, the BUI importer of whatever version you currently have. You can put it into the assets directory folder or into any folder you like it should work still properly it's important to note that we need newton j newtonsoft.json for this to work once you imported this script and it compiles it should automatically install this package or ask you to install the package but it's good practice to make sure that it installed properly so we know that we have the package and everything will work correctly so go to the windows tab up top go down Hit package manager, go to the unity registry on the packages drop down, go into the search bar and type in Newton. Here you'll find the Newton soft JSON package. Click on that and you will have to hit install. If it says remove, then do not click it. You already have it installed and you're ready to go. Let's hop back to our blender project. Now that we're back in our blender project, time for me to show you how this add on works. If you hit N to open up your end panel or the small arrow in the top right corner, you will find you now have a tab called Unity. This is the tool in its entirety and everything will be controlled from here. Let's start with the simplest tool that is in this toolbox, Rename. If you hit Rename while you have an object selected, you can rename that object from the menu. Vase 1. Once I hit OK, you will see over here that the object has been renamed to Vase 1. This is just for ease of use. Now let's talk about colliders. In Unity, your game objects typically have a collider, so your characters or objects cannot go through them. You can add them now straight in Blender, so they can be imported into Unity with pre-made ready colliders. You can add, automatically add box colliders, capsules, cylinders, spheres, convex colliders, and convex VHACD colliders. I'm not entirely sure what that stands for but it's a generated collider that is more similar to a mesh collider you will find in Unity. Now, I made a mess. <laughs> I don't want all of these colliders. This is where these toggles up here come in handy. I have my vase selected with all the corresponding colliders. If I click this, you might think they're gone. They are not. This is a toggle to help you work in your workstation easier and quicker, just to turn off the colliders of the selected object in your scene. But there's an extra feature that if you hit hold down alt and click on the toggle, it will prompt you with a delete. So now if I finish this prompt and hit delete, I can no longer toggle on and off those colliders. Those colliders are now permanently deleted. This is useful for if you created mass colliders or if you used a convex VHACD collider, And you did not want to delete all of these colliders one by one. You just click on your vase, alt click, delete. For now, I just want a box collider on my vase because it's not a big object, but I would like it to collide with other things. So I think I'm happy with that. 
I'm going to toggle off the collider so I can see my vase better. But now it has a collider attached to it. So it will be ready to have a collider once imported into Unity. And that's great. Now let's talk about LODs. LOD stands for level of detail. It's how much detail your object will have compared to how close it is to your camera. So maybe this is my most detailed version of my vase. And when I'm up close to it, I want to see it the way that it's meant to be seen. But when I'm this far away, it doesn't have to be that detailed because that's just slowing my game down. So a lot will help you with that by changing the object to a less refined version of it the further away you get. So the player doesn't notice, but the game runs smoother. It's an optimization tactic. This tool helps you do it without the hassle. Hit the plus button, add in a lot percentage you want. I'll say I want 0.6 and then hit create. A lot has been generated. Now you can click on your vase and do the same thing as the toggle colliders with your lot. Easily turn on and off your LODs for an easier workflow. Additionally, you can add multiple LOD layers. So maybe you want numerous LODs on your vase. Now you can have that quickly and easily. Just like the colliders, if you want to remove all your LODs, you can hit toggle LODs with the alt button and then you'll be prompted with a delete. And once I hit delete, those LODs have disappeared and I can no longer toggle them. They are permanently gone. And you can easily recreate them by clicking on your object, going to the LODs tab, and hitting create. It will remember the settings you have inputted here for easy creation of LODs across other game objects. Another important thing to note about LODs once they're created and having a quick delete for your LODs is important is let me give you an example right now. Once I created this LOD and I'll tog them off, say I want to go back to working on my game object and I ch ended up changing the texture over time. The LODs will not correlate those textures. They will hold their old materials. So an easy fix to this is holding alt permanently deleting the LODs and creating new ones. And then now they will hold the current material. I'm going to delete these, swap back to the material that we are using, and now create my LODs. And now I will toggle the LODs off. Now our vase has two LODs and a box collider ready to go. Now it's time for the exciting part, exporting from Blender into Unity. In the export tab, you're presented with a lot of options and it might be a little overwhelming. Let me help break them down. This section is a directory section for where you'd like your objects to be exported to. So back in our Unity project, I made a folder in my assets folder called games and then models. And this is where I would like my objects to be exported into. I'm going to now delete these so I can give you a better presentation of this working. I'm going to delete the textures and the materials. Now let's go back to the directory that I wanted to export into. Right click the empty space, go to show and explore. Now click on it again, that folder. Copy the path from the file explorer. Go back to your blender, hit plus, paste your path. Now hit add folder and there it is. Ready to go straight into our Unity project. Next is your type of selection. You have two choices, objects or collections. This is pretty self-explanatory, and we're going to do objects for now. I will touch on collections later. For exporting one singular object like this phase, hit objects and select your item. This also works with numerous objects selected, and they will be exported as individual prefabs into Unity. For now, I just want the one object. You now have these options to export the materials and textures and the children. The children are the other things within the hierarchy, such as the collider and the LODs. I recommend keeping this checked. This also will have other use cases that I will show later. Finally, there's shader type. This is dependent on your Unity render pipeline that you selected. Standard, Standard Specular, and Autodesk Interactive are all for the built-in pipeline. This is great if you never picked a pipeline, because this is most likely the pipeline that you are already on then. Or if you're creating projects for VR chat, I'm only throwing that in because a large majority of you guys probably are VR chat creators. So this would be, these would be your options. If you're using a different pipeline, you have the options right here, Lit or Autodesk Interactive. I'm going to be using the URP Autodesk Interactive because currently my project is on the URP pipeline. This is important to get right because if you don't, your material will come out pink. You will have to use the render pipeline converter inside of Unity to fix it. It's not a big deal, but it's more of a hassle. Now, we might think we're ready to export, but it's important to note that not every single material can be exported straight into Unity. We have to make sure we follow the naming schemes of our materials that Unity has. So back to Unity, since I want the URP Autodesk interactive material, I want to follow these naming schemes so my textures should have underscore normal underscore color 
underscore metallic and underscore roughness or emissive or AO. You don't need to have every single one of these textures, but you can only have these textures depending on the material you've picked. For a better example of this, I'm going to show you in the shading tab how my texture looks. You must have a principal BSDF shader on your object because this is considered PBR, which is what Unity uses. This is how my textures look. Black underscore marble underscore diffuse. There are a few other naming schemes that work. Diffuse is another name that works for color. Here's my metalness, my roughness, my displacement, and my normal map. These all have image files that are attached to my disk drive. It's important that you pack these images in your Blender file by going to File, External Data, and Pack Resources. It's also important to have these images on your disk. If you have similar files that do not follow this layout but are principal BSDF shaders, there are many ways of baking your files into these naming schemes and into these individual textures. I will not be showing you how to do that. There's many tutorials online on how to do that, and there are many add-ons that will help make that easier for you. I personally use Simple Bake. I do have to say though, it does cause me a decent amount of crashes. I do not have experience with this creator's baking add-on, but they do have an add-on called Quick Bake, which you will also find in the link below. Now that we have that out of the way, and you have your object with a proper material and proper texture files and proper naming schemes, you're ready to export. It's just as easy as hitting a button. Once it's loaded and your export has completed, go back to your Unity file. You will be prompted with a quick fix for your normal map. Hit fix now. And now you will find that you have a textures and material folder inside your asset folder. These are the textures that you've exported. And these are the materials that you have exported successfully already set up for you with your textures in place, ready to be tweaked and used. But once you go to your directory that you set for your objects, here you'll find your ready-made prefab. The prefab will already have the textures and materials applied to it, and the LODs will be already set up with your collider also as well on its own individual game object. As you can see, if I zoom out, the LODs will take effect all the way up to calling. And overall, that's about it. But let me jump into a few more use cases. Back into our blend project, I mentioned that you could have multiple objects exported when they're selected. So let's make sure you could tell that they're different. That's a silly vase, I know. Let's select both of these vases and export them. Now back in Unity, you can find that these two vases have now been exported. I did not make LODs or colliders for these two, but you can see they are ready to go. Now, as you may have noticed, they did not keep their axis. If that's important to you, in case maybe you're setting up a room or some other feature, what you can do in Blender is go to add, add an empty, do plain axis. Click on both of your objects and then the axis as the primary active object. Hit control P and object. Now you're going to only export the axis as the primary object and you're going to make sure that children is checked so you can take your vases with it. Once exported, you'll find that you have a single prefab with everything that was connected to the axis and their coordinates. But the prefab is not a joined object, so you can still go into your prefab and move around the individual objects. Currently, if you want to use Blender to Unity in this fashion, LODs work in a different way. LODs will not go per an object basis, and instead they will attach to the primary parent. They will still work with their individual LODs, but they will be affected by the axis of the parent. So when zooming in and out, it will be to the coordinates here. So it's important to note if you want, if you're building a big scene or room, either do not use LODs right now or set them up manually on each object. You can still use the LODs within Blender to Unity to generate your LODs. Just make sure you delete the LOD component in the parent and then again, manually set them up. There is a plan feature for upcoming Blender to Unity to have this feature option that you would like it to be on the individual objects, but it is not currently implemented. Colliders do work as intended. Finally, let's talk about collections. Collections are mainly just an easy way to select multiple objects. So let's say I have numerous vases and it's a little hard for me to keep up. I'm building such a large scene. I can select all of these, put them into a collection, 
and start building my scene or specific room in this collection. And instead of having to select every single piece or going through here, making sure I get every one and not miss one, you can just click your collection, hit collections, and hit export. And now you'll find I, I might have a little bit of a mess, but that's because it exported every single object in that collection as an individual prefab, and I made a million of the same vase. You won't have this problem if you're making different actual objects, and it will be useful because now you have all your objects ready to be placed around. This is an easy way to build an asset library. An important and great thing to note is if you go back to your assets folder and go into the materials folder, you will see I don't have numerous duplicates of my material unless I personally messed up something. As you can see, I somehow duplicated my material on one of my objects. But it will check your material name on top of your object and it will make sure not to create a duplicate every time you import. But you can have multiple objects that use the same material and not worry about a mass influx of new materials and keep things optimized. That goes for the same with your textures. Just make sure you have different naming schemes for everything you want to import. And so goes for the game objects. Make sure everything is named differently and properly because they will override each other so you can easily update your assets. An extra thing for me to quickly note is your game object will export properly with modifiers not fully applied, which is great because maybe you want to still make easy edits and you don't have to worry about that. Additionally, you can export armatures as an object and have the children being the meshes attached to the armature and it will work properly and apply the materials to those as well. If you don't want something to be exported, such as a certain child of an object, you can hide it easily by just clicking on it and hitting H or clicking on the I in the hierarchy in the top right corner. This will stop it from being exported. And that's the add-on, Blender to Unity. Tell me what you think in the comments below. This is my first proper review of an add-on because I was asked to do this by the creator, Karen. I do have to say I am now an affiliate, so I will make a small commission off of your purchases, and I appreciate that greatly. Either way, I was happy to review this add-on. It's an essential part of my workflow now. I hope that this video could have been some use to you. Let me know if you'd like to see more reviews and tutorials on Blender add-ons or Unity add-ons. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. One last thing I'd like to note, if you find yourself getting an error such as this and the export becoming infinite, here is my fix. You likely have auto pack selected and your Unity project is failing to pack certain assets. This for some reason, which is unknown to me, is causing an issue with the add-on. So uncheck this. This will not go away now. You have glitched it. Go to your preferences, go back to add-ons, find your add-on, just check it off and check it on again and it will work again. As long as you have auto pack off, it should work properly. And after, you can turn auto pack on if you'd like, but just make sure it's off when you hit export if you are having pack issues in general. That is all. Bye-bye for real this time. Thanks for watching.